welcome to part one of our second lesson in our fractions topic. Today you can see we are looking at multiplying fractions. So when multiplying fractions we times our top two numbers together and then the bottom two numbers together. So I typically find multiplying the easiest of our four operations with our fractions. So what we do is we take the top two together, so 3 times by 2 is 6. We take the bottom two together, 4 times by 3 is 12. So we get 6 over 12 and then I hope you're all thinking we need to simplify this answer. 6 and 12 are in our 6 times table. So when we simplify that down our final answer becomes 1 half. Our second example then, do exactly the same thing. 4 times by 9 is 36. 5 times by 10 is 50. So I have 36 out of 50. They are both in my 2 times table. So I'm going to get down to 18 over 25 for my final answer. When we are multiplying our fractions we can simplify them before multiplying and that makes our numbers much smaller. I don't know about you but if I was asking an exam, a non-calculated exam to do 15 times by 12 I would maybe panic and not know what to do. When we are simplifying though we cross simplify so we need to look diagonally. In this case I am looking at 2 and 12. They are both in my 2 times table so I can simplify them down to 1 and 6 because I've divided by 2. And then on the opposite diagonal, 5 and 15 are both in my 5 times table. So when I divide by 5, I'm going to get 1 on the top and 3 on the bottom there. I then just write my fractions out. So I had 1 and 3, so that becomes 1 third. And then 1 and 6 becomes 1 sixth. I'm then going to do the same thing as before. So 1 times by 1 is 1 and 3 times by 6 is much easier than 15 times by 12 and that gives me 18. So 1 18th is our answer there. For example 4, we're going to do exactly the same thing. 2 and 16 are both in my 2 times table so they are going to become 1 and 8. 14 and 21 are both in my 7 times table. So 14 divided by 7 is 2 and 21 divided by 7 is 3. So that means I'm going to get one third for that first fraction and two over eight for my second fraction. These numbers are much nicer to deal with. So one times by two gives me two and three times by eight gives me 24. And oh look there, we can still simplify again. So always check that we can simplify our final answer. In this case, we can divide by two top and bottom to give us one twelfth. When we have mixed number fractions, we have to make it an improper or a top heavy fraction first. So I hope we all remember from last time's lesson, we quickly did a wee recap. So again, we do our whole number multiplied by the bottom. So in that case, we get four, one times four is four. And then we add that top number on, which is three. So four plus three is gonna give me seven. So my new fraction is seven still out of four my denominator doesn't change. Same idea for two and two thirds. So two times by three gives me six. And then I'm adding on that two at the top to give me eight. So we are multiplying by eight over three. And again, my denominator stays as a third. Now I'm just going to double check here. I've got four and eight diagonally and they are in the same times table. So that's going to go down to one and two. So I've got seven over one multiplied by 2 over 3. 7 times by 2 is 14 and 1 times by 3 is 3. Again, unless we are asked to make it back into mixed number, I would just leave it as our top heavy answer. Example 6 then, I've got 2 times by 5 gives me 10. And then we add on that 2 to give me 12. So what we've got here is our 12 fifths and then I'm doing 5 times by 9 is 45 plus that 1 which is 46. So we're timesing by 46 over 9 
I'm going to then check if I can simplify. So 12 and 9 are both in my 3 times table. So that's going to become a 4. And 9 is going to become a 3. 4 times by 46 then. Well, 4 sixes are 24. Carry the 2. 4 fours are 16. Plus that 2 gives us 18. And then 5 times by 3 is 15. We cannot simplify any further. So that is our final answer there. That is you at the first part of your questions today. Here you can see we've got 16 fraction questions. Again, this exercise is non-calculator. So when you are submitting your work by the end of the week, we want to see full worked solutions. Try your best. If there's any problems, leave a comment on Teams or send me an email and make sure to come back for part two of today's lesson.